hey, it doesn't do you any good to make insurance sales if you're just gonna lose them all, right? So I, we had a comment recently, one of our YouTube videos about six ways to increase insurance customer retention. And I wanna talk through that. We have six different ways. You wanna stay engaged and you wanna write these down. Probably a couple things that you may not have heard before, right? So I'm gonna go through them, okay? The first one that is pretty standard, you probably heard this, is to send a thank you card after, immediately after you get back from making the sale. So you add a client, you get back to the office and you write a thank you card to that client, right? I always try to reference, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna add some ad lib and add some things with this. I always try to add uh, something that was personal that I remember, okay? So one thing that's personal, so let's just say that, that they said, um, you know, let's just say, well, maybe they introduced you to their family, right? Hey, en enjoyed meeting you, uh, loved hanging out with your family, right? Try to add something personal. Maybe if it was a hobby, you know, hey, hope, hope your golf game goes re re well the rest of the year. Okay, so start to, I always try to think through what's something personal that can help our relationship. That's why I like to ask those type of things. That's why I like to ask things about uh, family, occupation, recreation, things that they care about. All right, so that's one way, that's a common way. It's pr pretty generic, pretty simple, but most insurance agents aren't doing it. Most of you watching right now are not doing this and you should be, right? It's something I always did because it is important. It's one thing to sell it, but we, we make money off of balanced first year commissions, renewals, them buying more policies, them referring us to people. And so retention actually ends up adding a lot of additional revenue to your business that you don't normally think about, all right? So that's the first thing. Second thing, is a monthly newsletter. For those that have followed my channel for a while, you know that I used to mail out a monthly newsletter to every single one of my clients every single month. And what I would do is I would, I would always have a recipe, a chance to call in to win a gift card, maybe something about my family or my wife or, or the, you know getting a dog or a new house or whatever. Um, I would reference a new, uh, a certain product, maybe long-term care or something different that they may not have. And so I always liked when I did a monthly newsletter to, set, to, to design it, have a theme for the month. Maybe it's Feb February, maybe it's Valentine's related, all right? And I like to reference those things. And, and that's something that not only they remember, I, I will still see clients that come into the office, they'll meet with my dad now instead of me, and they'll reference a newsletter that I, haven't, that I haven't sent out for five or six years that I used to send out all the time. And so that's one thing to always be top of mind because the point of, of doing this is if they're gonna buy something insurance related, you want them to call you. If they've got a family that talks about it, you want them to refer you. And, or, if they're, or if they're thinking about you know, buying a new fridge or getting rid of their insurance policy, you want them to keep the insurance policy. This is some way to stay top of mind. Uh, a quick story that I always think about is with, with a monthly newsletter is I had a client that I would send that wasn't even actually a client of mine. It was an orphan policyholder of the company. I had sent them so many newsletters. I just added them to my newsletter list, even though I even though I was took over service in their account, didn't make any money off of it, and never actually sold them anything. I sent them a newsletter every month for a few years. They finally called me out of the blue, and I remember his name was Roger, and last name started with a B. And, and, and he said he said uh, Cody, uh, we need to buy some life. I need to buy some life insurance on my wife. And you send us this newsletter every month. He's like, I don't know why, but you have been for a few years. So I think because of how well you service your clients or non-clients, I think I should just do business with you. What do you think? And I'm like, well, it paid off. I think you should. So that's another way to stay top of mind, whether it's clients or non-clients. If it's family and friends, add them to your monthly newsletter. Super important. This got me so much of a personal relationship and credibility with my clients, probably more than anything else I'm gonna talk about. This was it was time sensitive it cost some money you know let's just say that let's just say that you have 500 clients you know and maybe it cost you 250 bucks to actually send this out because maybe it's 50 cents a piece once you have paper envelope and and you know uh postage right and then you got to have somebody do it most, most most people don't have 500 clients but even if you do it's worth that small investment to stay top of mind and to keep a really solid relationship with your clients all right the third thing that i want to touch on is a birthday 
card, but I'm going to put a spin on the birthday card that most people have probably never heard of, right? I'm going to give you the $1 idea. I may have referenced this on a past video, but I've referenced it very little, so I'm going to reference it again. And that is, and, 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 and this isn't my idea. I, you know, I can't say that every, every idea I ever mentioned is original. And that, you know, I probably heard it from somebody else, and I probably did with this one as well. And I heard from an agent one time that they sent out a birthday card to every, every one of their clients on their birthday. And they would add a doll, they, they, they would write, uh, Betty, uh, you know, hope you have an amazing birthday. Back in 1942, uh, it cost five cents for a can of Coke. It cost a little more today. However, have a Coke on me. And they would, happy birthday, and they would leave a dollar in the card. You think about that. Yeah, maybe it costs you 500 bucks a year. Who cares, right? Most people that send out a birthday card, it's always, it's always related to, you know, hey, thank you for your business with me. And they put a business card in it and they make it real businessy, right? Don't, make it personal. Think outside the box, be creative. Send a dollar, right? It's a, it's a, it's a freaking dollar. And that is one way that people will always remember and it's extremely creative and I've always been impressed by that. I also know an agent that does annual calls to all of his clients. He has thousands of clients and he has, he has some service people that actually do this for him. He does it for an annual review potentially to set appointments to get people in his office. But typically it's just, hey, I'm gonna, you, you could use it to do that. But he typically does is like, hey, I wanna check in, I wanna check on you, um, how's everything going? And they end up getting so many additional lines of business and referrals that they never intend or rewrites that they never intended on getting all because they did this. And by doing this and making these 3,000 calls a year every May that they do this in Arkansas at this one agent's office, his name is Dan. And they get so much business out of that because they spend time doing that. And every May, like clockwork, they do this. And it works and it pays off for them. Okay, so it'll pay off for you too. The fifth thing is, and I know some local agents um, that their uh, names are T Ty and Matt, and they do a customer appreciation event every single year. They actually had a bunch of, bunch of they had about, uh, I think they had about four or 500 clients actually show up to this at Bass Pro Shops in Springfield. Um, in, in a banquet room and they, you know, they fed everyone and everything else. Maybe it cost them a, you know, a couple grand to put it on. But they got so much additional, not only did they get additional business, but they got so much, so much more additional loyalty because they're selling Medicare. That not only did they get business from new business, uh, referrals, cross-selling, people wanting to buy annuities and life insurance and everything else, but they got, they, they engaged with their clients and, and their clients felt like, they want to stay with them because very few people actually do this and it creates a bond. It creates loyalty with that client. Super important, something you should definitely consider. And then the sixth thing that I wanted to add, and it's more relevant nowadays, it's probably not on most, it's probably not on most uh, videos that people put out about customer retention. It's probably not on people's mind, but your brand matters. As long as you're not putting out on Facebook that you're getting drunk all the time and that you're a scumbag and everything else, then, or have two different Facebooks if, if, that's, the, if that's the way you want to live your life. But I would encourage you that if they have a Facebook, add them on Facebook and engage with them every once in a while. You know, them seeing your post and you seeing theirs is only going to help keep you top of mind. And it's only going to help that bond and that loyalty and that engagement. And it's important, right? If it's their birthday, also, shoot them a video in Facebook Messenger. Hey, Betty, hey, happy birthday. I've got a special gift coming out to you. Hope you're having an amazing day. Just wanted to let you know. Hope you're having a great birthday and an awesome year. I'm here if you ever need me. Okay, thank you so much. And just keep it simple, right? Who can't pull out their phone and do a video like that? You know? So think about social engagement. It's important nowadays. S social, most of your clients are on Facebook. If you're not, you need to also be on Facebook and why not add them as a friend on Facebook as long as they're cool with it. I would bring it up at the end of an appointment or end of a call. Uh, I think that this is one thing that most people don't think about, but it can, it can absolutely increase the engagement and continue to keep you relevant and in front of them. The only reason we do a good amount of business here is because we put out videos like this constantly and ads and Facebook and Instagram and everything else and you see us a lot which maybe 
creates a little more bond between you and I. And so I want you to think outside the box and think about these six things over the coming months and years to increase customer retention. Hey, if you love our podcast and you want to know how to create a six-figure renewal income, go check it out with my buddy Brandon Clay. It's right there. Click on it and I'll see you there. A final expense agent is a grinder. They're a porch hopping, door knocking warrior. That's the way I characterize them. And that's affectionate and it's a compliment. I've got at least a hundred agents.